Well, hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Mailbag Monday, episode number 10. I can't believe it's already been number 10 already. 10 weeks have surpassed, and we're still getting questions that we get to answer on the channel, and that's great. And if you have a question that you would like to have answered on Mailbag Monday, shoot me an email at k8mrd at icloud.com, and make sure to include in the subject Mailbag Monday. That way, I will not ignore your email. <laughs> we got a lot of great questions. I want to dive right in. So let's get to it. The first one is talking about, I'm going to call this one KM4 ACK versus the world. <laughs> so this viewer is asking, I just watched your video on the KM4 ACK antenna kit. I just started doing activations and this seems like a great antenna to add to the arsenal. It is. However, it looks like the kit is sold out and might be for a while. My question is, have you tried any other kits that perform as well as the KM4 ACK? No pressure, Jason. The good news is, is that uh, KM4 ACK is most likely watching this video. And uh, Jason, you need to get to work, buddy. There's people that want your antenna. Now to answer that question, I, I need to say that any antenna that's good and actually made for portable is going to be hard to get. That's just the way it is. The, the, the bigger manufacturers of antennas, they make them, they make kits, but I don't think they really completely grasp the idea of portability in that the compromise is that the, the whole package is going to be bigger. So any of the antennas that I'm going to show you are going to be smaller, something that I would actually want to carry I promise you, you're going to most likely have to wait for about half of these antennas. That's just the way they are. A good portable NFET half wave antenna is hard to come by. So having said that, let me show you a few and I'll show you where we can get them. We'll, we'll hop online in a second. But let's take a look here at, um, these are some antennas. These are all NFET half waves. This is the KM4 ACK. This is the pac -tenna. This is the 10 tennas. This is the K6ARK right here. Uh, inside this box is an antenna that I have to review. I'll show you in a second. These four, without a doubt, I guarantee you are awesome, fantastic antennas, but you're gonna, availability of these is gonna change all the time. So let's hop over to the uh, internet machine here and I'll show you. So here, the first one, the K6ARK, if you want a kit, this K6ARK is the only other one on this list uh, with the exception of the one in the box that I haven't used yet that is a kit that you're going to build the whole thing. So you simply go to Amazon and you type in K6ARK and hit enter. Okay. $20. Now this is the uh, male version. There is a female version. I didn't see it, but the one that I have is the female version. So I plug coax into that where this one on the screen is designed to plug directly into your radio. Uh, no coax, no counterpoise. It's just a, a great antenna that works. The next one here that's actually a kit is from uh, a guy by the name of Yakov. Uh, he's Pop Poppy Naki 1999 on eBay. He's in America. He's in North Carolina. He he he's a Poda hunter. I've worked him a couple times. Uh, he just emailed me out of the blue one day and said, "Hey, I just made this antenna that I'm selling on eBay. Can I send you one to review?" Of course, I said yes. So that's what's inside this box about your 52.99, you do need to include your own wire with that. Another one uh, is obviously Pactenna, a bit of unobtainium, they're sold out. I did just get a notification that uh, probably in a few weeks, as of the time of filming of this video, they should have more in stock. Follow Pactenna on their groups.io for notifications. That's really the uh, best and only way you're gonna be actually be able to get a Pactenna antenna because they sell out pretty much instantly. I'll leave a link in the description for all of these. Uh, some of the eBay ones, however, you just need to search eBay for the uh, company. So, for example, you need to type in uh, Poppy Naki 1999 or Kit to Build 4901 on with an integrated antenna winder for NFET Halfway Poda. Type all that and you'll find it. Or just type in NFET Halfwave and it'll, you'll eventually find it. But uh, same thing with this next guy, 10 Tennas. That's what this guy is right here. This is just a, a 49 to 1 transformer. This is the QRP version. Notice it says Soda and Poda. He has another version that has a uh, 
There you can see the BNC connector. He has another 100 watt version. This is the QRP version. He has another 100 watt version that's like 40 bucks. Again, you need to add your own wire, cut it for resonance. But uh, I have made many, many, many contacts with that. Uh, I kind of rotate between all of these. These are all my go-to antennas. So it, what, any one of these is going to get you on the air just fine. And uh, the last one here, this is from Nelson Antennas. He is up in Michigan. In this manila envelope right here is his 80 meter NFED half wave. Uh, again, haven't opened it because I still have to do a video on it and I want to show all of the good stuff of me un un unwrapping it. But uh, this is just the transformer itself. Again, add your own wire or search Nelson antennas on eBay. That would be what I would say to do for your NFED half wave antenna woes. Get any one of them, get all of them. Either way, they're all gonna get you on the air very, very well. So there's my answer. Our next question has to do with putting up an antenna in a slightly unusual place. Maybe, is it? I don't know, I don't think so. This viewer is asking, could I put a UHF VHF antenna in a tree? I have a Comet GP3. I've not seen many videos on YouTube on the subject. I'm sure I would have to ground it just like uh, the tower. If I put it in my tree, it would likely be one of the highest UHF VHF antennas in the state. So do that. <laughs> so I wanna show you, this is my very first VHF UHF antenna. Now it's this inside this tube right here is the Ed Fong J-Pole antenna, the dual bander. And I, I kinda made these uh, standoffs and this comes out and, and is used as the mast, okay? But I used to put this antenna in a tree like this when I first got into amateur radio because I wanted to get my antenna higher. So I kinda just used this part to prop on one branch and kind of just leaned it in there. I mean, I guess I'm doing the same thing now in hindsight with leaning my antenna mass uh, for end feds in trees, but uh, absolutely, this is the first thing I did and it worked, it got me out. I was able to hit the repeaters with, uh, I was using really crummy coax, so I can imagine the losses I was getting, but uh, yeah, this absolutely worked. And I've even thought of, of putting uh, other antennas in trees in a little bit different fashion so let's just never mind this part here pretend that's not there now if if our antenna has any bit of little kind of nubby at the top you could even tie a rope or something around there and literally just hoist it up the tree have the coax coming out the other end be done with it i mean height is might however you can get an antenna up in the air is going to be better than it not being in the air now, depending on how thick your foliage is, if you're in the middle of a dense forest, your VHF, UHF signals probably aren't gonna get out that far because the trees uh, are, are going to absorb that uh, RF. For example, when I go hiking in the woods, I, I barely can hit the repeaters uh, that I can normally hit with my HT, no problem, because I'm in such thick vegetation. So there is that to consider, but if you just have like a, a random tree in your yard that you can put the antenna in, absolutely, and you will have the highest antenna in your land. So yes, uh, I mean, absolutely do it. Uh, but I, I don't think you'll have problems unless you're in really thick vegetation. So good question. Uh, hopefully that does it for you and hopefully you get the antenna up there and hopefully you make a lot of contacts. Thanks, thanks for writing in, that was a good one. Up next, we've got another versus, if you will. Love this question. Uh, I'm in the market for a vertical antenna system and initially was looking at the Buddy Stick Pro package. I think the single radial was the driving factor, but not sure if I liked it suspended above the ground. I then started looking at the Wolf River Coils antennas and what they have to offer. I like the TIA Mini for portable size, but it has three radials, although ground mounted. Possibly another difference is the coil and how it is tapped and tuned. It looks to me, you can tune the take it along on the coil by rotating the tap with the buddy stick. You tap it and then adjust the whip and the radial. I would just like your opinion on the differences of the two antennas. I'm leaning more towards the Wolf River Coil since I will be using it more at the QTH than portable, but want the option. Eventually I'll get an actual shack in the house and have a permanent antenna. I hope you do. For now, I'm just constantly portable. So great question. And we've got two really great antennas that work similarly, but they work kind of different. So here's both of them. Let's start with the Wolf River Coil. So like you mentioned, yes, 
everything is tuned to an extent, depending on, on the size uh, whip you have. But if you just buy, whoops, the stock antenna as it comes, yes, everything will be done. This coil slides up and down. And to fine tune it, you simply twist this and it's basically raising or lowering where uh, the metal contact is in there on the uh, coil. So very, very easy to tune. I, I say that loosely. I still recommend having an antenna analyzer with either of these. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. Now, the Buddy Stick Pro, like you said, everything's already tapped. That part's easy. The tricky part is here is your single raised counterpoise wire. Now, they have heat shrank and color coded approximately where this counterpoise is supposed to be in terms of length to be resonant, but it's not always the case. So uh, now I don't have very much experience with this antenna at all. This is just a loaner. My friend Scott from Ham Radio for Non-Techies lent me this and I haven't played with it yet. I've only gotten on the air with this antenna uh, once when I was in Florida with James, uh, Ham Radio Adventure Guy. It got out very well but it did take me quite a while to tune it. I was back and forth, back and forth uh, between the counterpoise and the radio, and then checking the SWR, running back to the uh, counterpoise, and very, very fine tuning. I'm talking like a wrap around here, and uh, it is raised, so that brings up another issue. Well, it, it may or may not be an issue, but it is raised, and I don't know about you, but when I go portable, it seems that anytime I put up an antenna, people immediately start walking towards it. So there is something to say for a raised counterpoise. Now, I would recommend uh, if you go that route, put something on it or just use a more high-vis wire. This is green, so it kind of just blends into the background. But if you get like some, some yellow wire from soda beams or something, that'll make it more high-vis. The Wolf River coils, I've had people walk right through the radial field and nothing bad has ever come of it. Uh, I mean, you try and be a good steward of amateur radio and say, hey, there's wires on the ground, look out, but life happens. As far as uh, just getting on the air, they both work very well. And it's just a matter of, I mean, to me, it really would come down to the raised counterpoise versus the uh, radials on the ground. So, you know, in terms of principle, they're both a loaded antenna. You do still have to adjust the whip uh, sometimes if, if you have a longer whip with the Wolf River coils, so uh, that does sometimes come into play, but for 40 and 20, no, you don't at all. So uh, I wish I could give you a more concrete answer, but I just don't have the experience with the Buddy Stick Pro. I'll tell you that I have a lot of friends who use the Buddy Stick Pro and swear by it. So I, I really have not had anyone that I know personally say anything bad about it. And I know a lot of people that have that antenna. So uh, I don't think you'll go wrong either way. Although I don't know if the Buddy Stick Pro was designed to be outside very long. I know for a fact, the Wolf River coil will withstand uh, like Minnesota winters where they make it. You know, Michael KB9 VBR leaves one outside all the time. Uh, I've hosed mine down after trips to the beach. They just, they can take a licking and keep on ticking. So. Uh, that's really all I can tell you on it. Hopefully that gives you some information to kind of sway you one way or the other. I don't think you're making a bad decision either way. I just don't know enough about the Buddy Stick Pro yet to really kind of fully give it the KMRD seal of approval. But thanks for writing in. I do appreciate it. Coming up next, we've got a great question from a new operator looking to get started in Parks on the Air. He writes, hi, Mike. Really excited to start activating. Done a lot of listening and some hunting. My question is, how do you find a clear frequency to activate? It seems like 20 and 40 are always crowded on the weekends and I definitely want to avoid stepping on any toes. So first off, good for you for not wanting to step on any toes. Uh, really the answer is to simply follow the DX code of conduct, especially number one that says, I will listen and listen and listen some more and then listen some more. Some people are very long-winded when they talk uh, on ham radio, and you could be tuned into a frequency that there's two people talking, but you can't hear uh, the person who's talking right now. So that's why it's very important. We always want to listen, you know, for, for 30 seconds, a minute or so at least, and see if you can hear anything. 
Or even if you hear something really faint, you know that someone's there, so just tune off. After you've listened for what you think is a reasonable amount of time and you haven't heard anything, key up the microphone. Is the frequency in use? Is the frequency in use? Always ask, is the frequency in use? We want to be good stewards, especially as parks on the air operators. We really want to hold ourselves to, to a little bit higher accountability. At least that's, that's what I try and promote. Uh, and, and be really the best steward of amateur radio that you can be and use best practices. I, a rule of thumb, always stay at least three kilohertz away from a station. So one thing I do is I'll actually tune up to a station, tune three kilohertz away, listen there, maybe even go four kilohertz away. I don't have my transmit bandwidth set wide either. I, I usually keep it on mid because I don't want to be splattering. I check my ALC, I make sure I'm not overdriving my mic, so check your mic gain. Uh, do all that stuff. You don't want to create splatter on the bands. There's enough of it already with people overdriving their amps and overdriving their mic gain. So once you've found that clear frequency, again, at least three kilohertz away from someone, uh, then again, ask if the frequency is in use and you just go through it over and over again. Sometimes somebody will come back and say, yes, the frequency is in use. I'll say, hey, thanks for letting me know, 73K at MRD. Keep moving. Uh, there are some frequencies to stay away from, especially on 20 meters, like 14,300. There's just always a net there, so just don't ever bother going there, uh, ever. 14,332-ish <laughs> uh, is usually an area. There, there's, there's another net that's... Uh, just constantly the YL system is kind of always on there. There's some net, uh, same thing around 14264, 262, somewhere in there. Uh, you just, you kind of get to know this after being out so many times, but again, the, the, the rules are going to stay the same. Listen, 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 and ask if the frequency is in use. You know, some, sometimes it takes a few minutes. You're, you're very eager and excited to get out there and you want to get on the air and it's like, okay, I'm listening. You know, a good minute, minute and a half has gone by. I'll, I'll turn on the radio as soon as I can. And even, even if I'm not ready to get on the air and just kind of find a clear frequency and listen while I'm setting up the camera or doing other things or grabbing stuff from the car. And uh, that way you're always listening and you can, you know, monitor that way. But if you hear anything, tune at least three, three kilocycles away. But when you tune that three kilocycles away, well, maybe someone else is two more kilohertz up from that. So... It, it is, you know, I, I always count in, in threes, okay, three kilohertz. So if I find a station, I move three kilohertz away from them. If I hear something two and a half, three kilohertz up, I'm going to find that clear that station, uh, and then I'm going to go three kilohertz away from them. So I'm always moving at least three, three kilohertz away from a station that I can hear. Uh, great question. I hope to catch you on the air, and good luck with Parks on the Air. And with that, wraps up episode number 10 of mailbag mondays i thank you so much for tuning in each and every week like i know you are i'm sure none of you would miss a single episode and i know that all of you have already hit the subscribe button and hit the thumbs up and left a comment so we can keep this mailbag monday thing going if you want to have your questions answered email me k8mrd at icloud.com in the subject put mailbag monday and i will not ignore your question and you could be featured on an episode of mailbag monday and you'll be youtube famous so <laughs> i can't say that with a straight face anyway guys thanks so much for tuning in we'll see you next week on another episode of k and radio stuff 73 guys mm -hmm.